Hello, my test, my test, one, two, three. <laughs> Prepare for battle. No worries. We'll uh, give you a little bit of time here. As uh, I can, I've been able to hear you, but you might have been muted over uh, for the productions. But, uh, you, were you were just talking about the fact that you've been fans of Puck Champ for a while because uh, Ti Thunderbird. You were saying Puck Champ wasn't one of the teams that I'm presuming you guys scrimmed or something. certainly shows uh, a lot of motivation and it seems to have paid off as they've been starting this uh this dpc season uh they've been looking very very hot they've already claimed uh, a couple of uh, scalps to their name and uh, both teams by the way start off with five man spokes and now we're both sitting in the river spamming the stickers making good use of uh the fan packs that uh, valve recently put into the game and uh loving the fact that you know we, we got all the teams being represented here we got t1 we got Hello, og quincy crew is in the mix here everybody's being represented in this eastern european matchup so you gotta love i, I love the fact that dota is so international man the battle begins <laughs> XD. XD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fair enough. The, uh, I, I think uh, I, I've been a, I was trying to hype Sheepstick up on the uh, the safe lane uh, SF as well, because I, I've run into it a couple times and I'm just like, damn, this, this hero actually just carries games. And we're gonna see it here with the Krillat and see whether or not he's gonna be able to uh, carry Puck Champ. But of course, I, I was very excited because I was like, I saw the EG game earlier against uh, black and yellow and they drafted a safe lane sf and i was like ah well, i'll be able to reference this when i go on panel uh eg did pick it they obviously believed in it i'm not sure if they believe in it anymore after their loss to black and yellow shout out to those guys by the way it's a a, a sick uh a sick upset from black and yellow really happy for them to be able to get that but yeah they lost with the safe lane sf so maybe, maybe that's not a good sign for the hero yeah, once you got outside the laning stage, it scales like a beast with all the talents, especially, right? You got the 25 attack speed talent, the presence affects buildings, so you can actually be a building hinder. And it just yep. keeps scaling level 20 talent, great as well. Dyer's top talent. He hits like a truck, yeah. that's for sure. And there's a, there's a lot of supports uh, that are very meta right now, especially in Eastern Europe, that work very well with it. Uh, we saw, like, Bane, for example, like, Nightmare into straight up Requiem. That's, you know, an auto kill on most heroes. You, we've got uh, Snapfire being very meta right now. That chaining of, of negative armor, as you said, like he could be a building hitter. And with those two minus armors combined, it also means uh, supports and even cores can just get crushed by it. But uh, there's certainly some downsides to it, right? It is still ultimately uh, one of those heroes that is very glass cannon. Yeah, I was wondering what people do a response when we see this SF carry, and Spearbreaker comes to mind. I was wondering yep. if they do it, and they did it. It's a hero that just has no ability outside of the pike, so cancel the charge, just get on top of him, make his life a living hell. So I was disconnected a little bit, trying to fix my mic, so I didn't really see the landing setup, but interesting enough, kind of put their carry in the off lane, right? And then they put the OD in the safe lane. I think they're just trying to dodge the PA Underlord matchup. <laughs> yeah, I have to imagine they would not be happy about uh, having that matchup. And, and this also sets up OD in a, a better lane as well, right? OD always succeeds more in his laning phase when he's up against a, a melee hero, right? Because he could really abuse that in, imprisonment without being out of position. And then once he gets his meteor hammer, uh, it is going to be a heavy, heavy kill threat. Fortunately, God's hair is going to be saved today. Uh, as he he bet his hair that meteor hammer was going to be picked up by an OD. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll let me just say, gods, I have seen an OD or two not go meteor hammers. So I'm not sure if you want to keep making that bet. I'm just saying, 
I, I would love another. I'd like to see it. <laughs> yeah. not, not I would love to see what God's meteor looks like hammer, called. but yeah, the God's no <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder. Uh, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on OD? I, I'm not super sold on it just because Next I feel game. like it's so um, one-dimensional. Because we haven't seen a build that works besides meteor hammer. Well, that's fine. It's, as long as the build works, Excellent. right? Like when you watch okay. off laners, like Sand King goes dagger every game, but you know it works. So as long as it's working, but he needs to play with. It's not a space mid, right? So if you're gonna play him on three, you kind of need that spirit mid. Crown Tokyo is a four so first on top. Yep, they managed to pick up that one, but it looks like the SF may be traded back as Yutaro is going to be able to get that last dagger. Uh, still, though, maybe for the first blood gold, it's worth it to be able to trade support for core. I don't know. How do you feel about that? I think both carries are happy with this. Yeah, because he did get the gold, but that's so low XP going to PA, so... Honestly, it might be better for PA, So she's going to hit level 5 here. And once she finishes her treads... Also a hero that can just get on top of that stuff. That's the name of the game, right? Get on top yep. of them, do the damage, there's a range drop. Bash back, Astral is gonna die. Mira showing up yep. with the Spirit Breaker, uh, helping OD win his lane. Yeah, it can even help pressure Malik a little bit. Right now, the OD and PA are top CS on the board right now. So these side lanes are going very, very well for uh, Team Spirit. Yeah, the, the fear I had about this SF being weak in the early is kind of like being proven here as well. Radiant like his early game just seems so weak. Like he's even versus a PA, he's struggling. And that says a lot, right? PA's not really known for her laning prowess. Yeah, certainly. Just keeps on getting daggered and uh, with the early orb of corrosion, it's making this SF look pretty sad. Kalos, he gets uh, jumped on and almost killed, in fact. It's so uh, oh, back over to bottom lane collapse. With the Meteor Hammer is now just going to start dominating the matchup. This poor, uh, this poor Underlord isn't going to be able to do a whole lot. Back over to top lane again. Once again, they're going on the SF. And this time he's going to go down the last dagger. Maybe. No, oh, intercepted. Tornado EMP. Fortunately, Toro is going to be able to blink away, saving his mana, saving he's charged. his health. But he's charged. And Mira just go right past the tier one tower, so they know this charge is coming, but they may not be able to stop the pressure here. As behind the tier one tower, they're gonna go for the dive here. Is there any helping hand? Mira, if he gets the bash, that's gonna be enough to be able to get the kill, and he could probably still get out too. Back into the trees, Young G does not want to pursue. XD. I mean, it may seem like a lucky bash, but Radiant's I think he would have just slided by Ember. Attack. He didn't get bashed Dyer's there, so dead either way. But well, sometimes is, you I get mean, that bash not, when you want it. It's not terribly surprising, but Dyer's Team Spirit up by 2k in six and a half minutes. The uh, TI winners, they certainly. Yeah, this is a uh, Chris gameplay. They rotate top the Ember. Spirit Breaker takes mid. Bottom being pushed out. The only chance they have right now is on Collapse, but how are they going to kill him? Like they can't without Invoker. So Invoker TP top, so he can't be bottom. Now he's walking bottom. If Invoker doesn't get something done here, he's gonna be really sad. He's been walking around for like a minute and a half doing nothing. Yeah, what what is a Quaswex Invoker without earn charges? Yeah, that's not a happy part. camper. Ducalis and Astral have been trying really hard for the last minute to, to make this gank work, and they finally do manage to get it. Spear midway through the Meteor Hammer, and should be a kill. Uh-oh. Are they going to run out of damage? Oh, dear, they are. The charge is going to come through from Mira. Collapse is already out. He can try and go back in in five seconds. In fact, Yutoro, he shows up, keeping their distance. Waiting to poke and poke until there is a hero low enough to be able to commit, and it's going to be showing it now. Prismit, Peter Hammer, Astral. He's gonna fall, he's gonna die, and Ducalis running for it. I don't think you can do anything to glass here. You don't have the nukes for it. He throws out the spear, does manage to land it. Young G and Malik need to be able to get here fast. Turns around, throws out the ultimate, but the damage is there. They finally get the kill they were looking for that entire time. Collapse falls, Yutaro. 
Uh, he's level six and was hoping for a crit or two to be able to kill Malak. Finally gets it now. Is he gonna jump? He's gonna, do it. He's gonna jump. Young G's ready to pounce in return. And oh, that was actually quite a six bait. Risky as hell, but ultimately it gets the carry of Team Spirit kill. Yeah, that was a little greedy there, but I respect it, you know. But the one thing you'll see that Team Spirit does that is really good is they're very efficient. You see Bane was farming the whole time. So was Ember. There was no part of the map that was being unfarmed by Team Spirit. So even though there's a lot of skirmishing going down there, Puck Champ committed four heroes to all of that. Meanwhile, Bane has just been getting levels on top lane and Ember's been shipping at this mid tower. It's like uh, Team Spirit have shifts. Like these heroes work in shifts where it's like, okay, you got farm, you're strong now. You're gonna go fight a little bit while somebody else recovers and they're just constantly rotating that shift. Like it's, it's obvious the first time you do it. Okay, carry or some core feels strong right now. He's gonna rotate mid lane or rotates out of mid lane. Some support takes over for him. But with Team Spirit, it's like constantly going. Uh, and it just feels like they're, they're always able to play aggressive against you. And as you say, uh, still be very efficient around the map. Yeah, it was a bit uh, surprising to see yeah, Toro be the one to TP and be part of that skirmishing and have the Bane free farming, but yeah. it'll pay off later when you see this Bane actually has some levels and we'll get some grip going. For now, now, he'll be getting killed. <laughs> yeah, Maposka goes down, as does Mira. Mira actually dies in the in the bottom lane as looks like they tried to get the kill on SF. Got super low, but not quite enough. Pronto to Tokyo hunting for that last hit doesn't actually find it either. I have not seen this Ember Spirit build before. He went Falcon Blade. Yeah. He went Falcon Blade and the Huh. Interesting. We'll see what the idea behind this is. More mana. Some HP, some damage. That feels like a very still. brawling build, would you say? Like he just wants to fight early, right? That's what most Falcon yeah. Blades say to me. But most people get the Orb of Corrosion for that, but it's like bypassing that. It's got the Blightstone. Yeah. We'll see how it plays out. It's just unique. You know, it's pretty standard on Young Chi over here with the uh, Oswex Invoker going for the Spirit Vessel right away. The only variations you see sometimes are the Midas after the urn. I wouldn't mind of this game either because it's not particularly an amazing Vessel game. It's good damage, but there's nothing strictly countering, right? Radiance Middle Tower. He is. And you've got some far behind. You got some decent setups for uh, Cataclysm later on. Uh, Spear and uh, Underlord, perhaps with the Pit of Malice. Radiant. PA is Oscar. a great hero to be able to burst down with uh, magic damage, pure damage. So, do you know if all the ODs are going to three point because they don't have to time their spell? Or is, <laughs> is this mathematically the best build? Uh, oh, sorry, you're talking about the three points in Astral Imprisonment? Is that what you're Yeah, because like the reason why you can do this is you instantly channel hammer afterwards yep. and it'll always hit, right? But yeah. It's not that hard with four points either. You just have to wait one second and then do it. But I wonder if it's just easier to do and you don't lose much damage anyway by putting more in orb. Uh, I, I have found, um, I'm, I'm speaking from being on the opposite side of the OD is that it just means less time for, for them to set up, which means less time for support to get there to stop you from being able to engage it. Uh, you know, like that, that, that awkward setup, that one extra second just means more time for somebody to be able to rotate in and potentially stop that meteor hammer from going off. And once you stop the meteor hammer, then a lot of OD just kind of falls by the wayside early, right? Yeah, I, I can see that. It's a lot of damage though for that last point, but I see that logic. It's working out this Radiance game for him. He's top of the CS attack. right now. Still farming like a beast. The only one little down. behind in the net worth is Ember, but you, know, you don't really mind if your Ember is the lowest of your force in a game like this. Yeah, for sure. Meanwhile, on the other side, Pugchamp, like, they're definitely minding the fact that SF is the lowest of the cores. He's built up a, a mask of madness and is just trying to hit neutral creeps, but it's, uh, this is not the hero you want behind. Uh, this is a, a carry that kind of wants to, to stay ahead of people. And it all just started with that very awkward laning phase for him. I'm wondering if that's even true, though, because I don't really know how you get ahead with this new SF. It's like you're not going raises, 
and you're like putting points in the stats, right? And he got one value points in the shadow race to kind of offset the laning stage, right? Mm -hmm. Which I thought about as well, but it didn't work. <laughs> and so he's I, just gonna I... keep hitting creeps, and then at some point, he's gonna get alacrity that with MKB, and he'll actually shred this PA. The top lane, real quick, they found Invoker. Fiend's Grip. They do manage to chase back Collapse here. The Spear's going to be able to stop pain from that Fiend's Grip. They're going to be able to get both of these kills very nicely rotated by Pug Champ and uh, keeping themselves in shooting distance of the uh, TI Champs. They're not letting Team Spirit run away with a magnificent lead. I, I will say the one thing about that, the SF carry is that I've seen a lot more of them go the, uh, the aura right away. Um, and, and I feel like part of that is just their vibe. I'm not sure if Mars was really able to take advantage because I've just seen they go the aura and then their support kind of wins the lane for them off of the fact that they're all missing, you know, four armor, which is yeah, usually for many heroes. It means they're they're into negative or, or they have nothing. Yeah, that's what I was theory crafting. I was like, what if Mars goes with Lightstone with this aura level one and just uses his shield to just smash them, you know, on the side. Might do yeah, yeah. Damage. It could have been. I, that, that's what I thought they were gonna do. Go aura, God's rebuke, level one, and just Radiant just start laying, just smashing them. But anyway, it didn't happen, unfortunately. And now their group up is five mid. What is the timing here for this? No grip? Is that what triggered this? Five man mid. I... Oh, collapse TP top. I think that was the trigger. Oh, you're right. But they couldn't really make anything happen, so Collapse is uh, like, okay, I don't need to rotate back to mid. You guys aren't really doing anything. Young G now going easy. back to the Hand of Midas. Radiant are scanning. Oh. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like what the next item timing is going to be for either team here. And I don't think either of them have a clear item timing, right? Like PA is going for Battle Fury, he's going to sit in Triangle. Underlord, he's got his Yules, he's okay just defending towers. Invoker, he's got some Vessel Charges, I guess they'll try hit this clear one bottom. Radiance and we'll see if they want to defend on some speed or not, so just let it go. At this point, probably, I mean, we, we can see that they're going to let it go, but I imagine if you're the PA side with a, a Battle Fury, you're pretty chill, right? Like, you don't need to make any team fights happen that aren't clearly advantageous. It's Mira kind of poking at the mid lane while this uh, bottom lane tower is pushed in. Collapse with a Meteor Hammer should be uh, one hit away. One more Meteor Hammer, rather, from being able to bring that, that mid tower yep they used the glyph for it it was a good read because normally you want to make a trade at all points in the game in dota so they saw their tier one bots going down so they all grouped around middle and we got it link dagger is up this is a very farm booty <laughs> yeah he's massive Tread blink. blink meteor hammer at 16 minutes going for the ags next very good save against the Mars, if he stays back. Not so good against Underlord, though. Maybe that's why they picked this Underlord. Seems like an interesting counter to Bodhi. I, uh, I, I wonder how many bad imprisonment saves do you need on the enemy team for you to um, to go the shard? So people can actually Does that work it. with the allies? Because I thought I tried it before, and I couldn't move. Uh, yes. You should be able to. I'm not, I'm not sure what bugged. the conditions are when it stops. Ago. Tornado, ooh, just misses Moposhka. Dances away through the trees. Is not gonna be able to make it out, but Puck Champ had to work pretty hard to be able to get that kill. And now look for Mira, caught him inside the arena. And miss the spear, doesn't really matter. Should still die, and they'll take this mid tier one tower. So Puck Champ striking back, uh, you know, just killing some force, but this mid tower is still important to be able to claim. The problem is, you said it really well. Team Spirit's just so efficient. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up just now. It's like, just because that happened, a lot of worse teams, like, Puck Champ made a good play there, no doubt, but. It takes a lot of discipline hey. sometimes to even be a TI winner, you know, to like to figure out that a fight is lost 
let's not make it worse. Oftentimes you'll see more people TP into that fight and they'll lose more, right? But they just cut their losses there. They let those two die, they're like, okay, this fight is awful. And they just kept farming. They kept pushing bot, they kept pushing top. And in return, they didn't really lose much of a net worth for losing their tier one mid and two heroes. And as a result, they're gonna have some very fast BKB timings as uh, Yutoro is closing in on his. We already have it on Toronto, Tokyo, and that's why he's being hyper aggressive right now in the enemy jungle. He's got Mira to be able to follow him up. The tornado landed on Toronto, Tokyo, but the charge through is what catches Young G. TPing in SF. Maybe this is what you're talking about of just letting your losses go. Oh, the pit into the fear, but Toronto, Tokyo is not tanking. Oh. He had the mana to throw out remnants and jump, but Toronto Tokyo uh, just played it a little bit too long there. Maybe underestimating that uh, minus armor and physical damage. Yeah, a bit of a blunder there. I think he was trying to save it for another slight or something, but that a little awkward. Astral actually leading off with the Yules might have been able to catch collapse, but unfortunately the rest of the team was not close enough there. Not yet, anyway. Main strip. Anybody be able to save this? Dukalas can go for the arena if he wants to. Oh, geez, they dropped the ultimate, but Collapse is going to be in some trouble here with the arena on out. The Underlord was not going to be able to save there, but they can still clean up these extra supports, so this is great for Puck Champ. Very, very nice fight for them, as uh, they just, I guess, kind of baited out the Underlord, and everybody from Puck Champ was still around. Yeah, that Yules ended up saving him and bought just enough time for his team to come in. Or honestly, like, outplaying them right now. I think Radiant Team Spirits is trying to, like, play with the bare minimum Radiant's numbers. To try to be more farm efficient, but Radiant they're feeding away too many kills. And Puck Champ's really capitalizing on that. I'm a big fan of this uh, Yules Underlord. I was watching the, the Puck Champ replay uh, that I missed earlier today and uh, i believe they also played underlord with yules there and uh, maybe i've just missed something maybe this is is more meta but that was, that was the first time i had seen it over like the rod of atos and honestly it makes way more sense just because the, there are so many more options for you you can still do the same thing pit yules into to pit again uh but it, it's also a safe mechanism for yourself it can be used offensively against certain good heroes like ember spirit in this example Dire are scared. Yeah, I, I watched that game. I, I was wondering if he just did it. Oh, anyways, they're going in real quick. They're going hard onto the SF, but he... Okay, never mind. Mira managed to get the ultimate off, and that is what's going to bring down the SF. He said it's good anti-carry against the Shadow Fiend we're seeing in action here. Dukal is throwing out the arena. Does manage to catch Mira inside of it, awkwardly enough, but missed everybody else, and they can't even commit for the Spirit Breaker because it's the PA and it's the OD they have to worry about. Toronto Tokyo coming in from behind is going to be able to chain the two supports up together and ensure that the rest of the team spirit can lay in the damage to win this fight cleanly. Getting the carry, getting the extra kills and uh now I'm just able to spread out across the map this is where it has to be a little nerve wracking for puck champ because now finally team spirit is online they got the bkb pa and that's the first fight they've taken where they had the number advantage and i imagine now that they have a 6k gold lead they will continue every time this bkb is off cooldown to involve this pa the fights from here on out will probably only get harder to have this and I have no idea how an SF turns the game against a PA. Like, if you're ahead, uh, you're tanky enough to survive through initial initiation. You can get an MKB earlier. But when you're behind, I feel like you're just going to get blown up in two or three shots every time. Especially because PA just hit level 18. And this F SF is only sitting at level 13. So these crits are going to shred. He has Mask of Madness going too. <laughs> so he doesn't even have any armor. It's yeah. scary, for sure. And, uh, well, Yutaro, honestly, the whole team would be pretty fearless. And whenever they pop their BKBs, not much can Puck Champ do to stop them. But it's about to get even worse with an Aegis on Yutaro. So look for some big, big dives. Unfortunately, Puck Champ is a little bit too late to the party with the smoke of theirs. And looks like they're maybe going to wait out somebody showing in mid and try and go for a pick but 
Nothing, nothing is happening here yet. Oh, he's got an Aegis now. Dyer's this is like attack. where you want to be he's as a PA, right? You got an Aegis, you got your Battle Fury BKB, and for Basher. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's yeah. top tower is under uh, attack. Perfect spot to be. I love the fact the Team Spirit would, were still cautious. Nobody from Puck Champ was showing on the map for the longest time. Uh, Toronto Tokyo played it very conservatively, didn't try and push in uh, mid aggressively or anything. The rest of the team all went top. They're playing behind the PA, getting this free tier two. They'll take the outpost. They can rotate back and their own tier two if they want to, or they can even poke at high ground with a meteor hammer and, and force Puck and some of the heroes to show inside the base. Dyer's top tower is under attack. We're gonna go for that ladder option here. Damage, it's gonna be a lot if Puck Champ do not come back soon. Meteor Hammer plus the Orbital Corrosion. Toro is gonna be caught inside the pit. Takes a little bit of damage, still has BKB and Aegis. So, at best, Puck Champ, they wanna be able to burn that first life for free, but Toro is able to back up. Asher complete Desso up next. Uh oh. Miro walked into an awkward situation. Pit into Yules, into Pit again, but Malik seeing the damage coming in. Gutoro's here. They're gonna try and get out real quickly with the ultimate, but it's not fast enough. Malik, the level two Dark Rift just took too long to be able to get the Uber Ride out for the Daya's SF. And uh, he's now gone. Team Spirit continue their assaults on all these objectives. They may, may even try for a high ground push again. Charge up to the top lane. Young G is able to get away. Looks like we lost fear for a little bit. Not to worry. He'll be back soon to join us. I'm not sure if uh, there's too much in depth analysis to put into Team Spirit. Just kind of rolling over Puck Champ right now. Puck Champ aren't really able to fight back. Uh, at the same time, they don't have the, the same kind of split push that maybe some of our other lineups that we saw before. So there's. Too many options here. Maybe when they get the Aghanim Scepter on Young G, they're 900 gold away from that one. His hand of minus is just sitting there off cooldown right now. He needs to be able to, to find that last bit of farm. Ooh, this is a nice pickoff. They can get a collapse. The Meteor's gonna drop. They're gonna show themselves. Dukas needs to get here quickly in order to stop collapse from doing any more damage. Yules, oh no! Miss time there. The Yules goes out as the Spear does with Ducalis. They throw out the Meteor, but uh, he's already got the Shard on OD. He's going to be able to back away. Blinks out immediately after the Imprisonment. Scott free for him, and uh-oh, Yutaro's here now. Yutaro's here. He's got the Aegis. Surprised at the hesitance there. They go back for Astral. Get that kill. Meanwhile, Toronto Tokyo is in deep here. Pops his BKB. Reveals at least one. They're going to be able to stop Ducalis from TPing out. That's the two supports dead. With the SF in the back line, Krilla's not going to be able to get away. And hey, wants one more kill. Thunderlord, so four without losing the Aegis, without a hero even getting close to low. A bit of a, a bungle there from Puck Champ. If they had maybe been able to catch Collapse with their combination, they could have gotten one kill, but sadly, they get absolutely nothing. A big goose egg out of that one. And, uh, 16 to 14, the kill score may be close, but the net worth not at all. 15,000 net worth lead now to Spirit. You are back. Welcome back, sir. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah. Visibility. Uh, all right. Looks like we're, we're still having uh, slight issues being able to get your audio onto uh, the stream, but uh, not to worry. We'll uh, keep on. Uh, honestly, this match may not be lasted too much longer with uh, Puck Champ. Right now, they're just setting up the guillotine. And uh, Puck Champ may have no choice but to, uh, to lay Dyer's their neck down on it. Yeah, they're stuck inside their base. Can't really get outside anywhere. Young G does have his Aghanim Scepter, but it's going to require a dream initiation for Puck Champ. And I'm not sure how they get that without Dakalis having a, a blink dagger. All right, let's see. Here, we'll try again. Yeah, let's, let's keep going. 
Alright, <laughs> <laughs> what I miss? Anything interesting? Uh, no, absolutely no. nothing interesting. Just no. sitting in their Maybe. base. Well, they're gonna try to smoke out now. We gotta do something for the network. We just gonna keep growing. Hollis sets up the ward on the high ground. I'm saying they need a dream initiation for them to be able to get the tag. And if they're off, that does manage to get out the ultimate right as the Ember Spirit came in. He got feared, but they didn't get any chainstone off of it because the old scepter once again from Astral. Now they're gonna try and get out of this team fight, but it's already too late. We've seen time and time before the damage comes too thick and too fast from the side of Team Spirit to let that Dark Rift go off in time. Another four dead for Puck Champ. This time around, they kill the Bane. One for four as opposed to the zero for four last time. XD. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, it's gonna look like that's all she wrote on this one. They already got the Glyph, but that's all they got left here. The Tornado. All three lanes are pushing in, so... Probably get two sides for us. And we'll see if Puck Champ has the spirit to... Continue on. Yeah. Is uh, looking at this game in, in hindsight for uh, Puck What would you say the the biggest um, the biggest moment they can learn? Uh, what was the biggest mistake they made in this game? Oh, uh, this SF looked pretty bad. So if they want to early pick a carry, they need to find a way to make sure it doesn't have this bad of a game. Like, if you want to early pick your carry, you have to be super confident that it's going to have a game, no matter what. And it just looks so underwhelming this game. Yeah, we saw it all TI. Like, it, if you want to be able to beat Team Spirit, you can't let them just run away with the lane. Step one, and uh, that's pretty much the end of this game, thanks to uh, some interesting lane positions, being able to get their OD the safe lane which put him in a nice matchup. Uh, Dodge the Underlord versus PA matchup as well, which is pretty rough for PA. But that's kind of what I mean, though. Like, they got away with putting their PA in the off lane, right? Yeah. <laughs> Normally, yeah. <laughs> you don't get away with that unless there's a weak link there in your draft. So cool. it just might be the understanding Team Spirit has, where, you know, Radiant a lot of teams when Clinks came out and it was really OP, Nobody could lane against him. They didn't know how, but people realized that Lynx is not good versus tri lane, so you build an aggro. So maybe it's a similar story here with the SF, where you can lane pretty much anything versus the SF in the early levels, and you just build an off laner that can beat the enemy's off laner, and you'll get a, a laning stage win. I was gonna say, I was just thinking of tri lane. So you think Hub Champ should have tri lane like right away the moment they saw the the lane setup? Because I'm not sure. Uh, having the Snapfire and with the Underlord really did too much for them. Whereas maybe they could have actually fought toe to toe in that top lane just between Snapfire and Mars. Uh, it could have been an option, but SF has always generally been regarded as a hero that needs a lot of levels, right? So you don't really yeah. want to play into the tri lane. But it might be different with this aura. There's just so many like question marks with side lane SF, right? Because we never see it. So I would have loved to see it, but he didn't get aura, right? So if he would have got that aura level one and they try lane, they might have done a really good job in that lane, actually. Spirit Breaker. Dyer's top barracks not are under attribute attack. that much to like these try lanes. Yeah. And unfortunately, yeah, uh... he just got sacked on Underlord, but he got sacked anyway. A tool to teach. The the aura plus uh, Snapfire, you're going into like over negative eight armor. The potential. Really strong, but Kralat is going to be in some trouble here, Chase. Look at that one dagger crit. Just a dagger crit from Yutoro is enough to be able to chunk down the uh, HP of the SF and turn up Puck Chain Protocol GG. It's kind of been going this way for the last 20 minutes, maybe more. Uh, and uh, Puck Chain Security.